Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a brand new PvP guide and tutorial by myself, Mr. Feudal. So, what are we doing today? Today we're going to be looking at the infantry class, basic infantry, basic foot infantry class. So, let's start with the stats and attributes. So let's go to a fourth tab. These are probably my recommended stats to start a basic infantry unit, an effective one at least. Now, before I go on with this, remember stats can always be changed. This is not a set in stone tutorial. This is just a basic foundation tutorial to allow you guys to actually play it effectively. If you want to change the constitution, if you want to change the agility or the strength, you are free to do so, but I'm going to cover a lot in this tutorial, so I hope you're all listening. Right, let's go on to the skills, okay? So, a basic footman infantry should really be able to use a warhorse. That's why I recommend putting 60 into cavalry. It allows you to ride a warhorse and keep up with the rest of your units. This is very important, especially if you're lagging behind with all your heavy gear. Now, the next skill, Militia, at level 60. The reason why I've pushed this to level 60 is because the next two skills are quite important. Now, a foot infantry and an anti-cavalry infantry I regard as the same unit. I just regard them as, you know, different sections of an infantry class. So what we're going to do is we're going to include both in this tutorial and this way you don't have to watch another video of me ranting about anti-cavalry soldiers. So, we push Spearmen all the way to level 90. Now this is for a reason. At level 0 you can use a basic spear, that's all good and dandy. At level 30 you can start using your boar spears, your all pikes and obviously your regular padded armour. At level 60 you can start using your Beck de Corbin and your medium pike. However, at level 90, if you have a shield you can now use a spear with your shield. You're now effectively a plate user's worst nightmare. A spear is a great weapon for piercing any type of armour, but it's great for really doing in a plate user. And if you get really good at pierce dragging, which is essentially poking and dragging the, the spear left or right to actually contact the enemy, you'll be a fantastic addition to any infantry section. On this game. Now, I've also opened up guard because this is where the anti-cavalry comes into it. You'd think, oh, why don't we just use a pike? A pike's good. However, there's a downside to using pikes. If you use a pike, you are static, you're in a static position, which leaves you open to getting shot, or if an enemy lancer or an enemy lancer has a buddy with them that happens to be a foot infantry, that foot infantry can run up to you while you're in a static position and kill you or do at least some damage to you to make you back off which then means the enemy lancer comes and gets you. The guard weapons are essentially the big brother of the boar spears, of the all pikes, of the standard Beck to Corbin and these include the glaive, these include the partisan and the poleaxe and the gasarmy. These weapons are very effective when applied against cavalry. If you stab at an oncoming horse, you will stop that horse in its tracks and you will possibly dismount the rider, especially if they're a low level lancer. This is very, very, very important, especially if you're against an army that has a cavalry superiority. It's handy to have one of these with you. Now, these weapons are quite heavy. As you can see, it requires 33 strength to actually use the Gis Army. It requires roughly 46 to use the Poleaxe, and it's quite heavy, 36 to use the Partisan. I would recommend using the Gis Army. It's probably the lightest of the lot, if I'm not mistaken. It's No, it's on par with the Glaive. However, it does great damage. It has a great reach. So, if you're an anti-cavalry unit, an anti-cavalry infantry unit, I would recommend the Gis Army. It's very useful, especially if you have a shield on your back and a one-handed weapon on your waist. This is a great back filler, and it's a great way to stop enemy cavalry from coming over and lancing you. Okay, let's get into the basics of a foot infantry unit. The basics are a sword in one hand, a shield in the other. 
and that is where Footman comes into this. I like to have this at 60, sometimes at 90, I'll explain why. Obviously at level 60 it allows you to open up Swordsman, but at level 90 it allows you to do the Knock Knock combo. Now the Knock Knock combo is a very, very lethal uh, damaging combo, especially if you get an enemy on a shield bash, knock them out of PvP or out of a uh, combat stance, and you do three downward hits onto their body, they are going to lose a substantial amount of a substantial amount of health, especially if they're out of combat mode. They no longer have that resistance against them. Now, the reason why I've pushed Swordsman all the way to 90 is to the same effect. At level 0 you can obviously use the practice sword, at level 30 you've got your free range of you know your regular armours, your nordic sword, your falchion which is probably, that's my favourite sword in this game, favourite one handed sword. At level 60 you can open up your scimitar, your gross messer and your heavy shields which are basically regional shields if you, if you want to call them that. They're a lot better protecting you than standard shields, for example the small kite shield or you know just your regular shields, for example the heater shield and the kite shields, the heavy versions are much better at protecting you. Right, why have I got it at level 90? It's, co it's probably got the easiest combo you can learn in this game. It allows you to do a left, right, left combo, which is super, super easy, or vice versa, right, left, right. And this essentially makes you if anything, you're going to be swinging all over the place, but it does a substantial amount of damage, especially to low armoured units. For example, guys in padded, guys in leather, guys in low quality chain and scale. Not so much when it comes to plate, when you obviously slash a guy in plate, you're not going to do a lot of damage. However, if you shield bash them and do that combo, you're going to kill them. You're going to do a good amount of damage and possibly leak them with the amount of bleeding damage that you're going to do. But that brings us on to the next skill, Huskarl. This is for your heavier infantry units. Huskarl is essentially unlocking the mace as well as your heavy armour sets, but it unlocks probably the most lethal one-handed piercing weapon in this game and that is the Morning Star. You will see a lot of videos and a lot of guilds utilise the tower shield and the morning star together and sometimes they'll turtle which is essentially two tower shields on their back with a morning star. I haven't seen a lot of usage with the war pick purely because of the damage rate and the hitbox is kind of weird for it. You can try it, it's up to you guys, you can try this, it's up to yourselves but I'm saying right now the morning star is the most lethal one handed piercing weapon in this game currently until they do any damage reductions or any change rates. You can see it right there, the swings in overhead, 63 piercing, that's like half of my health. Especially if you couple it with the, the, the correct armour which is scale, you might do even more, you might do 80. I've had reports from experienced players saying that they've had 90 Morningstar damage done to them, especially on overheads, and that's a lot of damage, that is a stupid amount of damage and something you should consider especially if you want to be a, f a really, really effective foot infantry. Now, you've probably noticed that Slinger and Archer are both open. There's a reason for this. Sometimes, when you're in a foot infant, when you're a foot infantry, you want something to throw at the enemy. You don't want to just run gung-ho. You want to skirmish with them a little bit, whittle them down, maybe do a few bits of damage, maybe 30 damage, give yourself a wee bit of an edge. The reason for this is exactly that. At level 60, you can use javelins and you can use throwing axes. Now, if you're just a basic infantry unit, you're going to have a sword on one hip and a shield on your back, which leaves you free one slot on your waist and one slot on your back. So you can take throwing axes and you can take uh, javelins. Just be mindful that it requires 20 agility, which this current character does have, and it's very ideal that you have that. Now, even better, at level 0, you unlock a crossbow, as well as standard piercing bolts. This is very effective. Again, you've got a one-handed sword, 
or one-handed uh, morning star on your waist and you have a shield on your back. You have two slots free. You can place the light crossbow or if you really want to get it to level 60 and you can use an arbalist at level 0 ranger and you can put an arbalist or light crossbow on your back and bolts on your waist. Very effective, very useful. You'll see a lot of uh, MMO guilds and a lot of uh, Life is Real Your Own guilds utilising this build, especially if they don't have a dedicated ranger or a dedicated archer. What they'll do is they'll segregate their infantry section to have a crossbow with them and some bolts. And this is very effective, especially if you're against, say for example, another foot infantry section that might have a ranger. You can now suppress that ranger or that archer. You now have the capability to make them slow down, plan your attack and then advance. Very useful. Right, we've discussed the attributes, we've discussed the skills. Let's have a look at the armor. So the armor in here is light scale. Here we go, light scale, easy peasy. It's very basic, it's a very basic armor and it's, in a way, it's actually okay. And it does look okay. I mean, you can buy a skin for this, but I'm not telling you to buy that. So this is what scale looks like. It looks kinda kinda beat up. You've got a wee skirt there that's got no scale whatsoever on it. You've got your, your leggings which have got scale knee pads, your boots have got a little bit of scale on them, your chest has got a little bit of scale on it, and you've got your helmet, which is essentially, to me, just a leather helmet with scale strips on it. Not fascinating, not interesting, but it does the job because the buff that you get out of it means that your infantry weapons get a buff of 3.6 and your shields become a lot better at protecting you at 3.6. So light infantry uh, will normally use this, this armor. I mean, you can run around freely with it. It's not a real heavy armor, but it won't protect you against, you know, heavier weapons. For example, a glaive or a piercing weapon such as the Morning Star. So that's the light version of the armor that we're going to look at. So let me just take all of this off and chuck it back into the chest. Next armor we're going to look at is obviously the regular set. The regular set is a wee bit shinier, it looks a wee bit more blinged. So let's have a wee look at that and its magnitude will obviously increase as well. So here we go, we're putting all of it on. It's a kind of, almost, the, the armor almost looks kind of Norse looking, very Scandinavian looking or Frisian looking. You can see the scales all overlapping each other, sort of. And you, I really like the helmet as well. Again, there are skins for this. I'm not telling you to buy them. I'm just making you aware that they exist. So, this is regular scale. It is very fancy, very shiny. Let's see what the magnitudes are. 7.36. Again, protection, damage. Protection, damage. Protection will essentially make the shield a wee bit more resistant to enemy attacks and it will make your sword swings a lot greater in damage. So, let's see the heavy set. Now, I might have to set my skill to 90 Huskarl for this to, in order to show you guys the royal set and you'll probably laugh your heads off at the royal, the royal set because it looks really weird. It look, almost looks like a Persian immortal. So, here we go, the ninja gear. This is the heavy scale. Heavy scale uh, is probably my favorite for going into fights because you look like this. This is mental. You do look like a bit like a samurai warrior, a ninja, if anything. If I turn my face to the sun, look at that. Look at that. He's got the full bishop's mantle. He's got full closed if anything, if I, if I was going to call this anything, I wouldn't call this scale. I would call this a coat of plate. I would certainly call this a surcoat of plate because it does look like plate sections added to this. But this is heavy scale. Heavy scale, as you know, is very heavy. But the buff out of it, 11.0 on protection and your buff to your weapons, which means you're essentially a walking tank at this point. So... Let's just make sure I can wear the royal armor. If I can, I'll just quickly put a command in that'll allow me to show you guys what it looks like. So here we go. Let's drop this back in here. Bonk, 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 bonk. 
Now, can I wear it? Now, you're probably going to be laughing your heads off. Look at it. Look at that mask. Right, this is the royal set. As always, the royal sets have a gold trim. Can I wear it? I can't wear it. I need to set my skill. Huskarl by 30. I'll increase it to 90. And there we go. We can now wear royal armour. And this is what royal armour looks like. Now, remember what I was telling you? That you look a wee bit like a Persian immortal? That's why it looks a wee bit goofy. Look at that. Look at the beard sticking out at the bottom. It's just overlapping the beard and no more. It looks kind of goofy. It looks kind of weird. But it is very, very useful in the one-handed combat fights. Especially against the plate guys. So, let's have a look at the magnitudes. Infantry weapons, 13.20 and protection, 13.20. You are now fully encompassed in scale and you are a walking beast. If you have a one-handed morning star and a tower shield, this is probably anybody's worst nightmare. So, for the remainder of the tutorial, I'm not going to wear the royal because the royal looks really goofy. I'm going to wear the ninja armour. So let's bring that over here, drop it into the chest, and I'll show you some of the some of the builds that people like to go with especially when it comes to weapons so let's get our heavy sections on get that one get that one that one that one right so drop it all on and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a shield now preferably you want a big shield so the most common shield that i see a lot of uh, infantry using is the tower shield. The tower shield is very useful. Let's attach that. Now you can see already, it covers my whole back. It is very useful. Very, very useful. Okay, so let's go to the weapon rack. One handed weapons. There's the Morning Star. Let's equip the Morning Star. And what we'll do is we'll show you the anti cavalry section. So, this is what an anti cavalry unit will usually look like. Obviously not with heavy armour. Maybe with heavy armour if your life is feudal your own. But this is what a heavy unit or heavy anti-cavalry unit will look like. He'll have his Morning Star, he'll have his Tower Shield, he will have his Geese Army. His Geese Army has a great range. It has a great swing arc as well. Then you pull out your one-handed weapon along with your shield. If it doesn't glitch a wee bit. There we go, fully deployed, right click, you're now fully protected. This is a great, great stance to be in. Obviously not against a two-handed guy who can actually pounce you and knock you on your backside. But going back to the left, right, left uh, swing, the thousand cuts, left, right, left. Thousand cuts, very effective, very, very dangerous. So this is what anti-cavalry will normally look like. They will have a sword or a piercing weapon, a, two, a, a big tower shield or a heavy shield. For example, if I go into the heavy chest, they will usually have, you know, a heavy targe shield or a heavy kite shield. These have a similar kind of protective arc as the tower shield. Very useful. Right, let's have a look at the setup for you know, a lighter version of this. So let's drop those uh, those items back in where they got them. So let's get out, uh, where is it, where is it? That's, that's, no, tell you what, we'll get the, we'll get the half decent shield, right? We'll get the big hard shield and we'll drop in our one-handed weapon again and we'll swap it out for a falchion. So we've now got a falchion. We're now going into the basic infantry loadout. So, here we go, we get our crossbow, we get our arbalist, let me just spawn in some bolts, there we go, add these together, and you'll see what exactly what I mean. So there you go, we're now a quite diverse unit now, we're a scale archer as, as they're known, but the great thing about having a crossbow and a shield on your back, your shield passively protects your back. So, when you shoot somebody, 
when you go to shoot, when you go to line up the shot and fire, you turn around and they shoot at you, they will hit your shield. If not, they'll shoot your backside, which won't do super amounts of damage, but you'll be much more protected. This is obviously better if you use a Paviz or a tower shield like you saw just there. Very, very useful, very handy, because as soon as you run out of ammo, you can then change and go into combat mode with your sword. So let me just show you the, the pullout there for the sword. So this is what the pullout looks at level 90. You raise your shield to protect your face and body and then you do an undercut with the sword. Very useful against people with, with uh, other shields as well. Maybe not tower shields, maybe against targe shields and uh, heater shields. Very useful. So let's have a look at a more, an even more diverse unit pack. So, we've had a look at the anti-cavalry, we've had a look at the diverse archer, the scale archer. What we've not looked at is the ability to use the spear with your shield. So, this is what you do. You get level 19 spearmen, you pick out a boar spear, you attach that to your back. Right? You press 3, deploy your spear, press 4. You're now essentially a hoplite. Oh, I pressed, pressed the wrong button there. Hold in V, you're now essentially a hoplite. And this, this right here, is what makes plate users really scared. A pointy stick with a shield protecting your whole body, they can't do a lot against this, apart from skirt round the lethal side. Now, remember when I was talking about uh, stab dragging? This is stab dragging. Right, I'll, I'll go to the dummy actually. I'll show you with the dummy. I'll show you with the dummy. Right? So, your enemy is in front of you. Your enemy is in front of you. What do you do? You don't go for a direct attack. They'll block that. What you do is you you drag it. You, you pierce away from them and you drag it. You drag it across to meet them. You see that? See how it's actually hitting it? There's very, very talented players in this game who can do it like this, they can do it like this and then actually bring it up to meet the head. It's very, very hard to do. I've tried it umpteen times. I've actually landed a few times, but not all the time. Some people like doing it that way, but a lot of people like doing it, obviously, this way. And you obviously turn away and do a little power dash away and you can gather some more distance between you and your target. So, this has been the basic infantry build, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you've got your own build for infantry, leave it down in the comments. I'd like to see your rendition of an infantry unit. We've covered anti-cavalry with a shield and piercing weapon. We've covered a scale archer who has a crossbow on his back, bolts on his side, and a one-handed sword or piercing weapon and a shield. And we've also got our diverse infantry unit with a spear. Very effective. I have left out poisons in this tutorial because I hate poisons. But if you want to look into poisons, the poison ability is essentially... What one is it? It's not that one. It's not that. Oh, wait a minute. It might be that one. Apply, po apply poisons. Equipment maintain. Unfortunately, I'm not going to go into much detail about this because everybody hates players who apply poison, but it is a form of PvP, it is, a, it is a tactic widely used amongst a minority of groups. A lot of people just like going out and attacking people, not hitting them once, fleeing, and then you drop dead five minutes later because he didn't look at your health. So guys, this has been the PvP Infantry Guide. Tell me if it helped, tell me you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, leave a big like, leave a comment below with your infantry uh, loadout. What do you like to take? If you want to see more of these tutorials, more of these PvP tutorials, consider subscribing. Remember to ring that little bell and you'll stay up to date with all the tutorials released. So guys, I'm Mr. Feudal. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm out of here. Good night.